Hi there! In today's video, you will be learning from Shilpa and her upbringing growing up in the United States as an Indian. She's going to share some of the challenges and some of the advantages of her life. Absolutely. Thank you for having me here. I'm glad you're here. Welcome. <laughs> So first question is, tell me a little bit about where you were born and raised. Yes, so I was born in Southern California, um, LA to be specific. Okay. So I'm a valley girl by heart. Um, and then I was basically moving around Southern California most of my life. And then when I wasn't moving around Southern California, we lived in Washington State. At some point we also lived in Colorado when I was much younger. Oh, so wow. I would say I'm like mostly a West Coast U.S. girl, mm -hmm. and then in my high school years, I moved to India. So, I've had oh wow kind of an interesting background. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, my question, my next question would be, so why did you move to India as a teenager? Yeah. So that's a good question. My my parents had moved out here to the states. Um, I would say around the early '60s, mm -hmm. and growing up, Dad had this dream that we're going to go back to India and build a bungalow and reconnect with all of the family that was still left. He had actually helped most of the relatives move to the United States. Oh, very cool. Um, so I was 14 and I really did not want to move there because mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I was enjoying being a California girl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we moved there um, and I lived there from 14 to 18. Okay. And so and, um, what language do they speak at from where your family's from? So um, I was uh, raised bilingual. Okay. And I, uh, yeah. And so I, I spoke Gujarati, which is a dialect in India mm -hmm. and it's very similar to Hindi oh okay it's um the script is very similar sounds very similar like Didi and, is like sister like yeah similar, absolutely similar same same like words oh, yeah yeah cool. or sometimes slightly different okay. pronunciations um so I was born and raised learning how to speak Gujarati mm -hmm. and then when I was about three or four years old I started actually learn English because oh, my mom was still learning how to speak English mm -hmm. and so it was interesting because every day she put me in front of Sesame Street, mm -hmm. and I hated because it was in those days there wasn't a lot of variety. Yeah, that's true. And so she would say she would pop me up like at the age of two or three in front of the TV, and she would have me repeat the same Sesame Street all day. I'm like I'm bored, but she's like you have to learn your English, and she was still learning. I mean, cute story that she would often tell me she would get embarrassed because she would get her he's and she's mixed up, mm -hmm. her genders. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's kind of cute, though. It was cute. So Shilpa is an amazing meditation coach, and I highly recommend her as I benefited from everything she taught me. Yes, absolutely. I do have a meditation business. It's called Omni Mindfulness and a podcast called Omnipresent Awareness. I recently co-launched a podcast called Mindful Mompreneur Moments. And I'm obviously linking everywhere so you can follow her and learn from her below in the video description. So I do have a few more questions for you. Before I ask her some of the challenges and benefits to the, her upbringing, make sure that you check out this next video with Wisem from Algeria and her upbringing and life in Algeria. Tell me what would be a um, challenge in being raised kind of with those two languages, two cultures, and yeah. being Indian but then in the United States. Absolutely. Um, there were a Quite a few challenges, but sometimes when you were when you're younger, you don't realize that these are challenges. You just think it's normal. Yeah. So I would say that one of the more bigger challenges was kind of perceiving life in the U.S. through the lens of my parents, because they were my like filter of the world. Mm -hmm. So coming home from school, you know, it wouldn't be like hot dog and hamburgers or American food, it would be some very traditional Indian food. Mm -hmm. And the culture was very, very, um, you know, I, I would say it's a religiously oriented. Mm -hmm. So our daily practice, everything was around those customs. Mm -hmm. And the language was inherent. So I wouldn't come home and just speak with my parents in English. Mm -hmm. It would be in Gujarati. Mm -hmm. So I, it, I could switch it on and off mm -hmm. and it didn't feel abnormal at the time. Mm -hmm. What was the bigger challenges at 14 moving from the US to India. Oh yeah. And so that was where the real culture shock occurred. Because you felt like what you had at home was just more amplified in India or yeah. like in what way? Um, the biggest challenge was really adapting to um, the expectations. I could speak 
the language in the U.S. with my parents by just listening to my parents and I had no accent. I, I actually spoke it fluently. However, when I moved to India, I had to learn how to read and write and pass the exams at the level of other students who had been learning and speaking the language and reading and writing it since they were children. Wow. Oh, yeah. I could see that that would be a challenge. Definitely. Yeah. And it wasn't just Gujarati. It was Hindi and Sanskrit. Okay. So, yeah. There's <laughs> a lot more to it than yeah. India. So, that was the lang language aspect of it. However, the cultural aspect was more shocking. It was a culture shock in the sense that, you know, this was like late 80s. So, it wasn't as westernized. I think now media and social media, people have sort of become a melting pot across different countries. True, yeah. However, then um, I was the anomaly and I, I sort of got made fun of for my American accent. Oh, um, so what would be some advantages to growing up the way you did? Um, I would say like big picture advantages is that it made me curious about humans. Mm -hmm. And I was curious about the culture, like, okay, this is something that is inherently me or part of me or am I part of two different cultures? And what do I want to learn more about? And I found myself as I grew um, older mm -hmm. that I was really uh, just curious about the whole world. Mm -hmm. Like I wanted to travel, I wanted to meet more people mm -hmm. and learn how do they um, adapt to different cultures. Mm -hmm. And I found one interesting thing is that the more people travel, mm -hmm that they show the sign of re resiliency. Mm -hmm. Can't pronounce the word resiliency. Yeah. <laughs> um, but well, one thing is for sure that I feel like it made me very curious about other humans. Mm -hmm. And that came into play as I got older and I wanted to fine tune my career. Mm -hmm. And I realized I'd like to do more ethnographic research and study mm -hmm. humans. Wow. And I think it definitely transpires in what you do now because Yes. You have such a compassionate heart and you're oh, helping, you. you know, other yeah. moms and entrepreneurs and you're helping so many people and so I think that, and you have that openness to so yeah. many cultures and upbringings and I so forth. Openness is a key thing, yes. That was another thing I was thinking of when you asked me the question is, I feel like I'm more open mm -hmm. and even one of my cousins said that just before I married my husband because yeah. he's not Indian Yeah. and, you know, I saw all the beauty of what he could bring into my relationship with him mm -hmm. and she said, you're just open-minded. Yeah. Which is true. Mm. I agree. Thank you. Well, thank you for so much information you provided. I do have a question I think a lot of the viewers would benefit from would be what would be some language learning tips that you could give them as they learn French or a different language? Um, I'll give the tip that one of my Hindi professors gave me when I lived in India and in which he basically suggested I watch Hindi movies. Yeah, absolutely. I and like that. You know, and I found myself really enjoying comedy mm -hmm. from a young age. So I would repeat lines from um, comedic scenes mm -hmm. in the Hindi movies. And over a time, like when teachers would ask us to write an essay in the native language, which is either Hindi or Gujarati for me, um, I would write little funny skits. Oh yeah, that's good, I like that. So, you know, just make it more amusing and lighthearted mm -hmm. and watching something immerse yourself in the culture mm -hmm. perhaps i mean given that movies aren't an, a pure reflection on reality mm -hmm. yeah but still if you can immerse yourself that's another thing i learned i did um, travel to peru okay. when i was a little bit older mm -hmm. and i very little spanish skills mm -hmm. but just being there for like three weeks mm -hmm. i felt like my skill sets had increased of course, it, it's one of those things, if you, you don't use it, you lose it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I kind of lost some of that. Well, that's how I felt when I went to India. Same yeah. kind of, I mean, I fell in love with the culture. I love the saris they wear, the food. Oh my gosh, favorite food ever. Oh, that's it's, beautiful. Um, so I, I can relate. Well, thank you so much for you know being here. Um, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and make sure you also subscribe to Shilpa and follow her. Listen to her on different podcasts that she has on Spotify. Again, I'm linking everything below so that you can start listening to everything that she has to offer as well. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you.